the church. Amen. Let's remember that. Somebody else. Remember the preacher that was on the square. Uh, I didn't get to go over there and see it, but I did see some videos on Facebook. I was listening to couple last night and uh, it, it sounds like he's a very confused man, like he hasn't been taught the truth. You know, it, it when you when you're preaching the gospel, you know, just like here, you gotta preach the full gospel. You can't just pick and choose verses. Uh, you know, you gotta preach the whole entire thing. Uh, you know, there was a same video, there was a man up there uh, I used to work with, a Shane Gonzalez guy. Uh, read about it, said that uh, I don't know what scripture it was, but he, he quoted some of the Bible and asked the preacher, a guy named Daniel Rush, he asked him, he said, well, what about this? And that Daniel Rush guy said, well, there's more to go to that. There's more to go with that. Well, here's the thing. If there's more to go, to that, go with that, what he's asking about, then why are you not preaching and teaching about you know the rest of what goes with what you're talking about? You know, you can't just come up here and condemn the world, condemn people. You know, you can't look at a child and say you're going to hell because your mommy's a homosexual. You can't look at a military man and, you know, just like Mike back there, I'm not fixing to look at Michael Michael because you kill people in the army because you're in the army, you're going to hell. You don't do that. You know, Jesus died, came and died for us to live. Jesus died so, so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't come and die for us so that we could all go die and go to hell. He didn't come for that. He came to give life, not to take it. And, you know, by Jesus dying on the cross, that gave every person from then until now the chance of repentance and realizing what the way I'm living is wrong. I need to ask God to forgive me. And if you truly do that, and you ask God in your heart, you truly receive Him, you know, if you start from then on, from that point till you know, whenever Jesus comes back or you die, if you live that point every day to the best of your ability, trying to live by what God says in the Bible, you know, I truly believe if you do everything you can to live by what God says, you're going to be fine. You know, you ask for forgiveness and you backslide, you've got the chance to come back to God. You're not just straight condemn the hell just because you've actually you have a chance at forgiveness. You know, if I, if that was the case of what the preacher was saying, then you know everybody in the world was going to hell. I'd be going to hell. I've actually on God, but I came back. I'm living for God. I'm I am i am you know I've been called preach and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna preach the truth. I'm not just gonna preach certain parts. I'm gonna preach the whole entire thing. Nothing but the truth, which is the whole entire Bible. You cannot pick and choose verses and just preach those couple verses. You've got to preach every word of the Bible. That is the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Amen. Got to do that. So y'all just keep him in prayer. Uh, and uh, keep everybody that's been going up there in prayer that the, the devil don't get them confused. And uh, keep us in prayer. Amen. Uh, you know, the devil's trying to fight us, but through through God's grace and mercy and power, we've been able to overcome. And uh, y'all, first of all, I want to say appreciate all the prayers for we've been out sick and family get-togethers and uh, appreciate all the prayers and stuff uh, and we're just glad to be back in church. Y'all Amen. Pray for us and we'll just continue to stay in God's will. Amen. Somebody else got a prayer request? <clears throat> Anything came back in today, and they're starting to see changes, so they're going to give it another week. So, you know, Amen. God can change things that we can't change. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else.
She's hurting real bad. She's taking it like a champ. And she'll be running out of here in New Year's. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> uh, just keep her in prayer, though. I know she's been hurting. And I, I'm trying to do everything I can to keep her happy and, you know, keep her, uh, keep her off her feet like she needs to be so she's not hurt so bad. But I'll go ahead and say it when we're stubborn. So y'all keep her in prayer. Amen. Somebody else. Amen. Hey man, listen. Um, let's keep everybody around this community in prayer. Pray for the other churches around here that God will bless them. Glory to God. That, uh, you know, we, we're all working for the same thing. As Nora preached the other night, we're all working for the same thing. And if, if the whole body of Christ has got an arm missing, then it's not whole. And if it's got a leg missing, Austin, it's not a hole. And I was thinking today, if it's got a little bitty pinky toe missing, guess what? It's not a whole body. It's a half of a body. And Jesus said, I'm coming back after those that's made their self ready. He's coming back after a church that's not 99%, but 100% ready to go to be with him. So remember my family. I got lost loved ones that needs to be saved. I got an older daughter that needs to be back right with the Lord. I tried to get her to come here tonight. I said something to her about her Aunt Connie was preaching, but She's busy, 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 working, working, working. She said, Daddy, i got to go back into work early in the morning. So uh, let's pray for her and uh, pray for my son-in-law. He needs to be back in church. Glory to God. Let's pray for, uh, who was that? Asked us to pray for him. can't remember who it was, but somebody asked us to pray for them on the internet that God would touch their body. Uh, also remember Brother Joe McCauley in uh, Florida or Georgia? Florida. No, Alabama. Uh, Alabama. He, uh, he's battling cancer. So let's remember him. We got watchers in Florida. Uh, yeah, we got watchers in Florida. Amen. We just had them the other night say they've been watching us down there in Florida. I said, well, North Hope said, well, we're getting it fixed where you'll be able to watch us good now. So if they're watching tonight, if you got, uh, you know, it's going to get out. It's going to get out. We appreciate Lord night. Anybody else got a prayer request before we go before the Lord? Amen. Let's also remember our leaders of our country. Let's also remember the ones that's that is our governors and our senators. We gotta pray for them. The Bible said we have to pray for them. We gotta pray for our leaders. And us pray that God will give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need to run our country. That's the main thing, that they have the they listen to the voice of the Lord. Anybody else before we go to Lord in prayer? Amen. Uh, remember, Pamela on here a lot about me. She told me yesterday that she was sick, and she just wanted me to tell y'all, thank y'all for praying that night. Amen. Remember her tonight. That's one of our live streamers. Thank God. Remember Sister Tanya Perry also. Yes, yeah, remember Sister Tanya, and they've been, Brother Jeff's been sick. She's been sick. So let's remember them tonight. Unspoken request by lifting up your hand with prayer around the altar, you can pray to your seat. Listen to me, Father, Lord God, as I come to you, Lord God, and thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity, God, to be in your house, Lord God, to be able to lift you up, God. May Lord God to give you praise, God. Lord God, we just pray, God, you remember each and every request, God, we give it in, God. Lord God, remember Misty's request, Lord God, remember Sister Tanya's, Lord God, Brother Edward, Lord. God, you touch his body, Lord God, don't let that spread no more, Lord God. And pray, God, in the field to get it all, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask God to remember us. This one on live stream tonight, God, as you give her a request, Lord God, you remember her tonight, God. Move upon it, Lord God, those that's watching in Florida, God, I pray that you would bless them, God. I I pray, Lord God, you remember Kevin's request, Lord God, we ask God in the name of Jesus, Lord God, remember everybody here tonight, God, their needs, Lord God, you see their hands, they went up to God. I pray, Lord God, that you would just move tonight in the mighty 
way in this service. Uh, but God, not our will, but your will be done. God, if people would get in one mind and one accord tonight, uh, and Lord God, we would see the glory of the God. Uh, Lord, we would see your glory come down, God, and we would see your praise of God. But Lord God, I pray that you would bless Sister Connie tonight, God, as she brings the word for tonight. God, anoint her, God, with that anointing that comes from above, Lord. Uh, oh, Lord God, I pray that you would move in this place tonight, God, and have your way, God, we ask, Lord. Uh, God, as we pray for our leaders of our country, Lord God, and our governors and our senators, Lord God, I, I pray, Lord God, that you would give them the strength, God. Uh, Lord God, give them the wisdom and the knowledge, God, that they need. Lord God, those that's not saved, God, can save them. Most of all, God, you put conviction upon their hearts, God, that they'll find you, God. Lord, quit their line and their victory and their fight, Lord God, that they'll come to you, Lord God. Oh God, I pray for our president and our vice president, Lord. I pray, God, for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord God. I pray for Israel, Lord God. I pray, God, Lord God. God, that you would just bless our army, Lord God. Keep your hand upon our soldiers, Lord. God, upon our uh, first responders, Lord, and our police officers, God. Keep your hands upon them, Lord God. We ask God, Lord, that you would just bless, Lord, this church, God, in the direction that we're going, Lord God, it will go in your direction, Lord God. Oh, God, we just ask it in your such state, God, that you would move up. Bless those out there in my street tonight, God, let it get into their hearts tonight, Lord God. Lord, let them get your study, your life, God. We ask God in your service. God, we give you praise, Lord God, for it all, God, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Brother Austin, Brother James. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Daniel, you want to say bless the Lord often? Well, we're coming tonight thinking for everything you do for us. We ask you to bless the offering. The ones that had to give, the ones that don't have to give. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. song tonight.
verse in there, it says, I'll do this little thing and I'll give you so much more. You know, don't matter how big the battle and the trouble seems to us, right. it's a little thing to God. That's right. It's a little thing. No matter what it is, whether it's sickness or your bills can't go to get them paid or whatever, that's just a little thing to God. You know, He created the whole world and rested on the seventh day. Right. It didn't even take Him a week to create everything. Right. Come on. So when we go through our troubles and we go through our trials, that's just a little thing to God. Right. It might seem big to us, but it's just a little thing. They said Jesus
Every night before we dismiss the church, we pray over our prayer box. Lord God, if you've got a need, you got a lost loved one, you won't be prayed for, put it in this box up here. And every night we'll pray over it. We'll ask God to bless and God to move upon that need. If it's a lost child, if it's a lost loved one, it's a brother or a sister, glory to God, or if it's an aunt or an uncle or a niece or a nephew, write their names down, drop it in this box. And I guarantee you God's going to do something. God's going to work on the other end. Glory to God. We pray over them. God's going to do the work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give Jesus a great big hand tonight. Now let's give Sister Connie a great big hand. Get up and do the best you can. You know, it might not be the 
best preachers in the world, or I might not preach as long as some preachers or whatever, but as long as I get up and do my part and do what the Lord would have me to do, you know, that's all that's required that's right. of me. Right, come you on. Know, I just thank the Lord for everything that He's done for me, you know. But we do not only have to go out and talk to people and try to get them to turn their lives over to the Lord, you know, but we have to live our life in front of them. Amen. Show them what kind of, you know, what kind of Christian we are, how we show them love and show them the love of the Lord, you know, and do the Lord's work. Lots of times people just look at your life, you know, and that's all they ever see. There's some, uh, there's a saying, you know, you might be the only, uh, your life might be the only Bible another person ever right. sees, you know, and what we do in front of people, not only give the mouth action of saying, you know, I'm a Christian, I do this and I do that, and I'm this and I'm that, but, you know, show them that they can see. You don't have to say you're a Christian. They can look at you and they can say, you know, you know that that person is a Christian because you see their life, you see the life that they live, you see right. what they do, you know, and that will make them want to, you know, they'll be wanting what you've got and they'll be wanting the Lord in their life. You right, know? Come on. And I just thank the Lord and praise Him for everything that He's done for me. You know, and like here it says that, you know, uh, we need our wedding garments on. We need to be doing what the Lord has us to do. Uh, we need to be saying what He has us to say, walk in the way He has us to walk, you know, just be a light to people. Amen. You know, and I just, I just thank Him and praise Him for everything. That Bless your Lord. Me. Bless your Jesus. You know, I just love the Lord, and I just always want to be found doing His will, you know, and uh, that's about all I have to say. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't have to preach both 30 minutes or 40 minutes. You can say what you want to have to be said, and it goes out. Glory to God. But I was thinking what she said right here. She said, over here he said, and, uh, and he said unto him, Friend, how canst thou in here having a wedding garment? And it was not speechless. He was speechless. In other words, when we go stand before God, and if our wedding garment is not on, we ain't got the bride of Christ on us. When we stand before God, we're going to stand there speechless. We're not going to be able to say a word to Him because He's done looked at us, done looked through us, and done seen everything that we've got. Glory to God, He knows everything. Glory to God, He sees everything. Brother Wayne, He knows if we've got the wedding garment on or if we don't. Like I said the other day, He knows if we're playing church or if we're not playing church. And He's not coming back after church that's playing. He said, I'm coming back after one that's made their self ready. In other words, He said, I'm coming back after one that I know that's living right. The one that I know is living by the best way that they know how, by the way God has commissioned them to live. Glory to God, Jesus is coming back soon. You know, the Bible speaks of what's been going on here in Glasgow. The Bible speaks of that. The Bible said many would come in my name and say I am Christ. Many would come and say I am this and I am that and I am this and I am that. But Jesus said woe unto them. Woe unto them. He also said that they were inward, they are raven wolves. In other words, they can come to you in a sheep clothing. They can look just like what you want the spectrum to look like, but inside they're a sheep. They're a wolf in sheep clothing, Brother Austin. Glory to God, just like, you know, God is a God of love, but He also is a God of wrath. But God don't do His wrath like what's been going on. God pours out His love, but He also pours out the wrath upon the disobedience, the ones that's disobedience. But I thought about it as she read this. Glory to God, He said, In the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. You know, when a king in a palace and he gets everything, he has everything set in order. He makes sure the finest fruits there. He don't have no bad fruit in that. He don't have. He makes sure everything is furnished for that wedding. He makes sure there's nothing in there that's bad. He makes sure that there's nothing that's going to be spoiled. But he makes sure that it is good, that it's perfect. 
And a lot of people says, well, uh, Brother Miller, I believe I can make heaven my home on by the way that I'm a living. Well, if you're living a halfway life, you're not going to make heaven your home. That's just plain and simple. You're not going to get in. Amen. Glory to God. I, I was listening to somebody the other night. And they was talking about, oh, well, it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. But God don't look at that. God just looks at the heart. God does look at your heart, but He also looks at your outer appearance and He looks at how you act. He watches how you present yourself. The Bible said present yourself a holy, holy before God. You don't come before God unless you come holy before Him. And a lot of people says, well, Brother Miller, uh, I can live this way and I can do this. But how are you being a light to the world? When you blend right in with them, you bleed right in with them, you, you say the same things they say, you say the same words they say, you say the same bad words they say. Glory to, well, Brother Miller, I just say them three little words. I don't say the big F word, and I don't say the big G D word. I just say the four letter word and the three letter word. But you know what? It don't work that way. The Bible said he'll clean us up from the inside out. Glory to God. He said what's in the mouth, it'll come out of the heart. Glory to God, if it's in here, it's going to come out of your mouth. If it's in your heart, it's going to come out. Amen. And the Bible says to make sure that you know, glory to God, that you've not got no malice, no envy, no strife, nothing in your heart that's going to cause you to miss having your home. That's going to cause you not to be able to go into the wedding that Amen. Sister Connie preached about. Amen. The wedding. The wedding. She done a good job. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Glory to God, I remember when Nora first started out, she'd get up, she'd preach about five minutes, and that was it, and she was done. But now, God has really given her the, you know that. Yeah. And, uh, but God is really blessing. I, I was telling the men that come out here today that put our Wi-Fi in for us, I was telling them that, you know how we... That we had to deal this church here and that God was blessing us. And uh, told him we want to be able to get out and live stream. I said, We're going to be able. He said, Oh, yeah, you'll be able to do it now. I said, You don't have to worry. And I tell you what, we just pray, say, Lord, he said, Y'all going to be streaming. I said, Yes, we're streaming. I know it's live stream. I forgot to give him the address to tell him to come out here tonight. I said, Come out to, he's a live community church, but I forgot, Brother Mike, to tell him the address. But I tell you what, when we stand before God, we're going to stand before Him just like we did. And He's going to read us like a book. Mm -hmm. And He's going to look at us and He's going to say, Are you living right? Amen. Are you living right? Did you live right? Did you do what I told you to do? Did you pray? Did you talk to me? Did you read your word? Did you study the Bible? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us to study this word. Study, study, and study, and show thyself approved. Rightly, rightly means. So you, you can't like Gavin said while ago. You just can't choose and pick what you want to holler out at people. You can't just choose and pick, and you can't be up there cussing. Amen. You can't be up there swearing and trying to talk God at the same time because the Bible said that bitter water, sweet water, can't come out of the same time. Glory to God, when people have such a brain water, sweet water out of that beer mouth, then it ain't going to happen. Glory to God, you know, you know the Bible tells us that our tongue is full of deadly poison. And a lot of people is killing a lot of sinners with their tongue. Jesus said, I didn't come into this world to condemn this world, but that the world through me might be saved. Glory to God, men wants to condemn people. Men wants to condemn people to hell. Men wants to condemn soldiers to hell because they kill somebody. We we'll read in the Bible. Amen. You read in the Bible. What did David do? He took a stone and he took that stone and he slung it and it hit the giant right in the middle of the head and the giant fell down. That didn't kill the giant. The Bible said David went up and took the giant sword himself and cut his head off. David committed murder. Glory to God, David had committed murder. When he would, uh, began to go with Bathsheba and he seen Bathsheba out there taking a bath, Brother Wayne, he desired to have her, so he called for her to come to his palace. And the Bible said that David laid with her, and after he found out that he had laid with her, and she was come forth as a, bringing forth a child, he called for her husband to come off the battlefield, 
Israel and he brought him in and he said, go home and lie with your wife. Go home. He wanted to try to cover up what he had done. But you know what he done? He went out and slept at the door of the palace. He didn't go home. And when David found out that he didn't go home, David told the captain of the army, he said, you put him out there on the front lines, you put him out there in the heat of the battle. You put him out there where he know that he was going to get killed. As soon as he put him out there, glory to God, he got killed. David committed murder, but guess what? God forgave him. David went and he prayed and he said, Father, please forgive me. Don't take my Holy Spirit from me. And God forgave him of his sins. Don't tell me God can't forgive you. God is a forgiving God. He will save you. He will bring you back, glory to God. Men are trying to tell you God won't do it, but God will do it. Hallelujah. God brought Bonnie and Michael back. God brought Bonnie and Michael back to the Lord. Hallelujah. There's offerings in here. God has brought you back because you backslid upon him. People say, oh, God, don't bring you back. But yes, he does. He brought Adam back. Glory to God. Adam was at the verge of committing suicide. Glory to God. A bottle in one hand and a gun in the other. But God spoke to his heart and said, no, don't do that. Glory to God. You tell me God ain't real. God is real. Glory to God. tonight to worship God. I didn't come to church to sit on my seat, but I came to give God praise. I came to give God glory tonight. Why? Because God is worthy of our praise. Glory to God. He said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry out in your place, Lord God. It's time, church, we get on top of God. Jesus told her, said, where are thy accusers? 
Where are they at? Where are they at? She said, I don't see them, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He didn't tell her she was going to hell. The woman at the well, Brother Daniel. Glory to God, she came there. And she was going to draw water out to her something to drink. And she had that pot upon her shoulder. And she went to draw water out of that well. And once she went, uh, Jesus was sitting there. And Jesus said, give me something to drink. What? She said, you have nothing to draw with. Jesus said, rightly. Uh, but he said, this water that I'll give you, you'll never thirst. Yeah. And Jesus began to talk to her. Uh, and he began to tell her what she had done. Uh, he told her, he said, go and tell her. He said, what did he say? He said, you got five. And the one you're with now is not your own. And glory to God. But he didn't tell her she was going to hell. He didn't tell her, glory to God, that she was going to split hell wide open. Hallelujah. Jesus told her he said. Hallelujah. She went back running to the city. She said, come and see this man that's told me everything that I've ever done. Glory to God, it didn't matter what she had done. It didn't matter what kind of sin she had committed. Glory to God, it didn't matter she committed fornication. It didn't matter she committed adultery. It didn't matter to him. Glory to God, he forgave her of her sins. And glory to God, she met a man. She met a man called Jesus. this. Uh, I've never met a man, never met a man like Jesus. Uh, glory to God, he can cause the blinded eyes to be open. Uh, he can cause the deaf ears to not stop. Uh, he can cause the tongue to talk. Uh, glory to God, he can cause the lame to walk. Uh, he can cause cancer to be healed. Glory to God. I've never met a man like Jesus. Glory to God. A wedding, a wedding has been made. But Jesus, Jesus is the bride. And he's coming back after the church. He's coming back after his bride. He's coming back after us. Lord God, he said, I'm coming back after my bride. Jesus said, I am the husband. And ye are the branches. He said, I am. I am. I am the vine. I am the vine. In other words, he said, I am the husband of this bride that I'm fixing to come back after. Glory to God, he said, I'm coming back after a church. A church. That's made her. He considers the church a woman. He didn't consider it as Adam or Steve or John or Josh or Daniel. He said, I'm coming back after a church that's made her self ready. Oh man, does that not take and knock some of them off their feet? From the beginning, God said, let us make man in my image. And God made man in his image. And it seemed that God said he needed a help me. And God didn't make a man for him. Glory to God, God made a woman. The right. Bible said, I made a woman for him. Glory to God, he said he needs a helpmate. He said, I'll take and cause him to go to sleep. And Adam went to sleep and God took Adam. And as Adam was asleep, God came down. Glory to God, he took the rib out of Adam, brother Wayne, and he made a woman. Right. Glory to God, he and from the beginning... To the end, Jesus said, I'm coming back after her. Glory God, a church that's made her self ready. Jesus said, I'm not coming back after a man church. I'm not coming back like that. He said, I'm coming back after a bride. Glory to God, when a man and woman gets married, the man is the husband and the woman is the bride. Glory to God, when you stand before the preacher, glory to God, you stand as a husband and a wife. Glory to God, a man and a female. Glory to From the beginning, I just seen this. From the beginning to the end, Jesus is the husband. And the church is his bride. And it's not a man. Sister Henry, he's coming after a woman church. A church. A bride. We are a bride.
bride of Christ. You say, Brother Miller, what are you talking about? And is God just going to pick a woman to be the bride? No, he wasn't talking about just a woman preacher. He was talking about the church. He called it his bride. Glory to God, Brother Austin, he called it his bride. Some people say as well. Brother Miller, you've lost your mind. Read the Word of God. He's in the Word. He said, I'm coming back after a church that's made her self ready. Her self ready. Without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. In other words, there better not be nothing on that garment. There better not be one little pin spot on that garment. Because that one little pin spot, that one little four-letter word, that one little three-letter word, guess what's going to cause you not to make heaven your home? You think, oh, no. Ain't that wrong with saying them little pie words, but yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The Bible says, swear not. Amen. And the Bible also says that we're going to be judged by every idle word that comes out of our mouth. Every idle word. Every idle word that comes out of our mouth. Oh, Brother Miller, you gone, man. No, I'm just telling you about sin. I'm not telling you going to hell. That's between you and the Lord if you want to go to heaven. That's between you and the Lord. If you want to go to hell, that's between you and the devil. I can't tell you you're going to hell. I can preach you the Word of God. I can preach you about sin. And I can tell you about sin. But it's up to you if you want to go to heaven. It's up to you if you want to go to hell. God ain't going God ain't going to take and say, hey, I want you to go. God wants you to go. But God's not going to come down here and say, I want you to go to heaven. He give you a choice. But if you don't live right, you're going to hell. That's right. God give you a choice. It's up to you if you want to live right. It's up to you if you want to make heaven your home. It's up to us as a church, the whole church. It's up to us. That we won't let this world out here see God's goodness. To see God's grace. Because like I said, from the beginning until the end, this church here is not my church. It's not Nora's church. It's not Wayne's church. And it's not Sister Connie's. It is God's church. It's God's church. And I've seen God doing things that I never would have imagined that God was going to do. I never did think Michael would ever be up here saying Honestly, I never did. I prayed for him. I've prayed for him and I've prayed for him. God save him. God bring him back in. Lord save him. Lord bring him back in. And you know what? God did it. God did it. And we leaving it up to God, Brother Austin. It's God's church. Brother Adam, it's not my church. It's God's church. It's God's church. And when we get that in our mind that it's God's church, that God is the one that gave us this building. He is the head of this church. I am just a shepherd. I am the one that feeds the flock. Glory to God. And if I can't feed the flock, there's something wrong. Glory to God. The Bible said that we're supposed to feed them. Feed them this word right here. This is the word of God. Me and Brother Wayne and Sister Connie and Sister Nora, if we can't feed y'all, glory to God, there's something wrong with us. But we want to try our best to feed y'all the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And I don't care if it inherits every devil in hell. Glory to God, we're going to preach the Word. We're going to tell you to live right. We're going to tell you to make heaven your home. You've got to live it just like the Bible says. There's no other way. There's no other way. Glory to God, there's no other way to make it in. That man thought he was going to make it into the wind, like Sister Connie said. And the Bible said that he could not go in. Because he didn't have on a wedding garment. And the Bible said, Brother Austin, that they gathered him up. And the Bible said that they told the master of the house, said, throw him into the fire. Throw him into the place of darkness. Where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where was he talking about? He was talking about hell. Because the Bible said in hell, the rich man lifted his eyes up being in torment. Brother Wayne, immediately, it wasn't just a three or four days later, he said immediately he opened his eyes up being in hell. We're not promised, church, that we're going to live tomorrow, but we're promised today 
Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow, if God lets you live, it's by the grace of God. If God wants you to live, He'll let you live, Brother Michael. But if God says, no, it's time for you to leave this life, guess what? That clock stops ticking. Unless you get to heaven and they're using it as a fan. You say, Brother Bill, what are you talking about? Have you heard that story? About them going to heaven? Said St. Peter, what's that? He said, that's, that's a clock. Well, what's it doing? It's ticking. Barely moved. He said, well, that's, that's you must live right. He said, well, goes to the next room. What's that? He said, that's another clock. And it was moving a little bit faster. And he said, well, I guess they committed a little more sin than I did. He said, what? I don't said, that, that, that's it. Goes to the third room. He opens up the door. He says, there's no clock. Where's it at? He said, well, that's your clock. They got it out back using it as a fan. In other words, hey, they're using your fan for sin. You had a lot of sin in your life. They're back there. It's been cooling the angels down. This is just a story. To get a point across. When we stand before God, we're going to stand before God. People always say St. Peter, but we're going to stand before God. The Creator. He's going to be sitting on that white throne judgment. And he's the one that's going to judge us. And he's going to say, either enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Or he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Sister Connie preached the word tonight. She told you about a wedding. And I believe, Brother Wayne, all these messages has went down the line right in order. From the time we've opened it up, Brother Austin's, all the way down, these messages has lined up. Has lined up. God has given a warning. God's trying to tell the church that you don't play church. That you can't play church. You've got to live it every day. Every day. You say, Brother Miller, I'm too young. No, you're not. The Bible said, once you know right from wrong, once you know that you know that you've done wrong, you know that you've lied to your mama, you know that you've lied to your daddy, glory to God, you know that you've done wrong, and you're accountable for your sins. You say, Brother Miller, I, I ain't really done nothing bad. I've done this, and I've said this, and I've said that, but I ain't really done nothing bad. But the Bible said no sin. No sin. I came in here today before the people came to put the thing in and I was praying and I was talking to God. Brother, I told God, I said, Brother, I said, God, I said, if there's anything in my life, God, forgive me of my sins, my trespasses, and my transgressions. Forgive me of my downfalls and my mistakes, God. God, I don't want no sin in my life. God, if I have sinned against you in any way, God, you forgive me of my sins. Because I don't want no sin in my life, Brother Daniel, when I stand before God. I want to know that there's no sin in my life, Brother Gavin. I want to know. Hallelujah. She begins to sing tonight. Sister Connie done a great job. A great job.
live stream things the other night come across that Austin preaching on the youth service man I'm telling you what I was excited I was totally excited because I know God was fixing to pour out something on him when the devil was trying to fight him. I said, God, you got something in store for him. And I told him, I said, Austin, you just let God be God. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I am really excited because I know God's got something in store for the young people. Hallelujah. I appreciate the Lord. Let's also remember Sister Rita Walden. Brother Joe said she has been real bad sick. She, she can't work. He ain't been able to work. She ain't been able to work. She's real bad sick. And uh, I talked to him a while ago and he said she's real bad sick. So let's remember her also tonight. As we pray tonight for Brother Herbert. Lord of God, and we pray for uh, Rita tonight. I, I mean, we really do. We need to pray for her tonight. And... Uh, like I said, if you've got a, a need or a prayer request you want to write, write it and drop it in this box right here. This prayer box. Glory to God. Let's remember our nation. Let's pray for our nation. God is trying to turn this nation back around. And I believe God's fixing to show the United States who is God. I believe Brother Wayne is fixing to show him that he is God. And that he is the creator. We wasn't made from monkeys. We was not made from gorillas. We was not made from the apes. The planet of the apes you see walking around and they talk and all this stuff. No, it ain't like that. We were made by, like God. We were made in his image. His image. And God said, I didn't make no mistakes. God said, if you make a mistake, He can put you back upon the potter's wheel and remote you and make you all over again. How are some people, I've watched a lot of people, Brother Daniel, I know some of them need some good Holy Ghost mortar stuck in them. Glory to God and all these little cracks and crevices and crevices that they got. They need some good Holy Ghost mortar rubbed upon them, rubbed in them. Glory to God. And I guarantee they won't have to worry about running their mouths. They won't have to worry about saying stuff. They'll be talking the right way. They'll be telling people the right way to live. They won't be screaming and hollering at them and telling them you're going to hell because you killed somebody over there in Afghanistan. Or you're going to hell because your mama's a homosexual. Or you're going to hell because you uh, uh, are uh, a murderer. You can't do that. Did you know sinners know they're going to hell? They know that. They don't need nobody to tell them that, Brother Adam, because they know they're going. How many glad Brother Adam's here tonight? Thank God. See, uh, Jesus came to the disciples and He didn't say, Quit you lying, quit you drinking, quit you cussing, quit all this stuff. He said, just throw your nets down and come and follow me. He said, I'll make you fishers of men. They didn't know who Jesus was, Brother Wayne. He just come up, come up to them. There they all was out there throwing their nets out catching fish. Brother Adam and Jesus said, just leave your nets alone, boys. Just come and follow me. Just lay them nets down, come and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. What was he telling? He said, pick me up. He carried the cross to Calvary. But he said, pick me up. I just followed that brother Wayne and just come to me. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. He said, and I'll make you fishers of men. And if you really follow Jesus, guess what? You'll straighten up. <laughs> And you know what? When we get ready to cross over to the other side, we lay that old cross down and we pick up our crown. <sighs> Royalhood, priesthood. I'm a child of the King. I don't know about y'all. I'm rich. I'm rich in the Lord. I'm a child of the King tonight. I am a child of the King. And guess what? I'm also the bride.
Church, we are the bride of Christ. That's right. And if you're a child, if you've been born again, your life has been changed, your blood, your sins has been under the blood, and you've been forgiven of your sins, guess what? You're a child of the King. Amen. You think, well, Brother Miller, I'm having a hard time. Pray to the Father. Say, Father, you said you're on the cattle of a thousand hills. Lord, can you speak to one of them farmers out there and let them sell one of their cows? Lord, let them bring me some groceries. Lord, let them bring me some money, God, to pay one of my bills with. Guess what? God will cause one of them old farmers to sell that old cow. You say, Brother Miller, you crazy? No, not. God will do it. Yes. God will do it. Because he said he owned the cattle on a thousand hills. He said, and you are one of my children. You're one of my child. I'm going to take care of you. You know, in the Bible, they give their kids a ring and they put it on their finger. And it was a signature. And when they went to go get something, all they had to do was show that ring to them and they'd get anything they wanted. And all we had to do is go to, father, go to the Father and say, Father, I'm in need of this. He said He would meet our needs. He didn't say He'd meet our wants. He said, I'll meet your needs. Amen. He said, you go to me and you tell me about your need. Brother Adam, if you needed some groceries and you go to God and say, God, I need some groceries. Lord, will you supply my need for me? And guess what? God will send somebody to bring it to you. If you have to send the devil to bring it to you, He'll send you some groceries. That was an old woman. She prayed every day. This old man next door to her, he out there, he's a drunk, and he would fuss and rear and run his mouth at her and everything. But that old woman, she'd keep on praying every day. She would pray. She was praying one day, and that old neighbor man was out there, and he was listening to her, and she was saying, Oh, Father, Father, you know my cupboard is empty, God, and you know, God, I need some groceries, Lord. But God, I've not got the money right now, God, to get groceries. But God, you know I need them, Lord. And she began to pray and pray. And that old neighbor man, he said, I got this. Watch this. I'll get her. I'll get her. I heard her praying. So he goes out there and he buys her all kinds of groceries. He brings them back and he sets them on the front porch, rings the doorbell, takes off a run. <laughs> She comes out and she opens the door and she just starts praising God and thanking God for her groceries. Oh, thank you, Lord. God, you gave me some groceries. I know, God, you was going to answer my prayer. And that old neighbor man, uncle, he said, God didn't give them to you. I didn't. You will thank God that you sent the devil to buy me some groceries. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God will do it. God will do it. My wife's cousin, don't go to church. I've witnessed to him and I've witnessed to him and I've talked to him. I don't try to shove it down his throat. But I say something every once in a while to him. We was in line one night. And right now he's going through some hard times. He's struggling. But I remember when he had money, he went in food line one night and this woman in front of him buying her groceries and she thought she had enough on her food stamp card to get what she had. And she got up there to pay for it. And when she did, she didn't have that much on her food stamp card. And she said, I don't know what happened to her. And she sat there and she started to cry. And she said, here, take this off. And she took a carton of eggs off. She sat there and she took this off. And she took the milk off. And she took the baby's milk off. She said, just take this off. And she started taking stuff off. She took the hamburger meat and laid it off. And, and the sandwich meat, she started laying it back. And the woman was taking it off. And, and he spoke to her. He said, ma'am, he said, you just pull ahead and ring that up and I'll pay for it. Don't you worry about it. I'll pay for it. It was $75. She took out the money and handed it to that woman. A sinner. A sinner, man. A sinner, man. Woman right behind him. She said... Boy, that was awful nice. He said, just go ahead and ring hers up. I'll pay for hers too. And he paid for hers. A sinner man. You say, is that going to get me into heaven? No, it ain't. Your good works is not going to get you there. If you ain't got Jesus in your life, your good works ain't going to get you there. There's a lot of men. 
They died and went to hell because they thought they could buy their way into heaven. He wasn't trying to buy his way into heaven. He'll tell you. He said, I've got to live right if I'm going to make heaven my home. But he said, I'm not coming to church and then going back out of church and being the same way I did when I come into church. He said, I won't come. He said, I've seen too many of them come into church and say they got saved. They go right back home and they start cussing. They start swearing and they start throwing stuff. And they start doing this. They start doing that. He said, and I, I'm not doing that. He said, when I get in, I'm getting all the way in. He said, I, when I get in, I want to know that I've got something inside me. When I go home, it's not going to be the same way it was when I came here. That's the way it needs to be. Hallelujah. I appreciate each and every one that's here tonight. We love you. Glory to God, I know Christmas is coming on. Monday is Christmas. And I hope and pray that everybody has a Merry Christmas. If I don't see you again, if you ain't here Sunday, i tell you we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And hope and pray that you get a blessing. The greatest thing you can do is sit under the tree and, and, and sit there and read the story about Jesus Christ's birth. That's the greatest gift that you could ever give your family is to read about the birth of Jesus Christ. I remember when I was a kid, Brother Wayne, my mom and dad, before we'd open our presents, they would read that story to us about the birth of Jesus Christ. Brother Austin, he's, my dad say this is the reason for the season. He said, it ain't Santa Claus in a red suit with a big white beard and a red hat, big old belly. He said, but son, he said, anybody that buys you a present is Santa Claus. Anybody that gives you something is Santa Claus. I was watching a thing today on the internet. Oh, St. Nick. Started out as a, just a young man. This woman was going to have to sell their girls to pay off the mortgage on their house. They was going to auction their girls off and sell them so they could pay the mortgages on the house. And the older one, she was the first one up to be sold. And she began to pray. And she said, Lord, I, I just wish you'd make a way that we wouldn't have to be sold. Where I would have to be sold. Got up the next morning. It's that old stocking hanging up on the fireplace. Got up the next morning. And there was gold inside of her. Little gold coins inside of her stocking. God made a way where she didn't have to go. To be sold. It was come up time for the middle one to be sold. And she done the same thing. And the daddy would pray. He didn't want to have to sell his kids to pay off his mortgage to his house. Woke up the next morning, she checked the stocking, there was gold coins in there. This little boy named Nicholas, St. Nicholas, would sneak in at night and he took that money in those stockings. The little girl, it's time for her to be auctioned off, the youngest one. And the daddy was really worried because he didn't know if there was going to be anything in them little stockings the next morning. And when he got up, the little girl went in there and she grabbed that stocking off the fireplace and opened it up. And there was the money in there and they had enough to pay their mortgage off. That's how God works. That's how God works. All we have to do is just ask and believe. That girl believed when she asked. This is way back in the 1800s. It's when this took place. That was back when they had to sell their kids on auction blocks. They sold them on auction blocks to pay off their bills and their debts. <coughs> but that was something. I read. I listened to that. And I read. I thought that was really something. That was amazing. But we appreciate the Lord tonight. Anybody got anything they want to say for the Lord tonight before we dismiss? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else. Good to be here Amen. Glad to have y'all here tonight. Sure am. Yeah, they got out from Horse Cave. I mean, they live right smack down in Horse Cave. 
You can't get no more smack down in Horse Cave than they do. They live right there off of 70, uh, not 70, but uh, 218. Right in the main drag right there. They drive a long ways, and we're glad they're here. Somebody else? I just want to thank the Lord that uh, our friend was saved uh, two days ago. Amen. Amen. Somebody else? I thank the Lord tonight for being here. Thank the Lord that we have a good crowd tonight, and I thank the Lord that He has supplied our needs, and I just praise Him. And, you know, we can never thank him enough because he, he gives us the breeze, he gives you walking and talking, and, and a lot of people take it for granted that they can do all this stuff. But, you know, the Lord is going to let you do it, and I thank him that my arm works fine. <laughs> and I'm praising him for that. Amen. Somebody else. I'm glad to be here tonight. You're talking about that guy up there. On the square. See, that's the world trying to teach you God. That's right. That right there is gossip. That's right. That's gossip. That's right. Amen. Trash. That's right. Amen. That man right there stands in front of me. We died together today. He's in front of me. Give me a walk before I get to her because I know the Lord God will say that man. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Anybody else? I thank the Lord for His unconditional love. No matter what we do, He will always forgive us. Amen. I thank the Lord for my family and for the Bible that my brother gave me. Amen. Somebody else? Hey, I also I just want to thank the Lord for uh, Brother Adam being a first responder and all the other first responders uh, helping save other people's lives. Amen. Somebody else? You know, we all ought to be able to say, I thank God for saving me. That ought to be the first thing. I thank God for saving my soul. Anybody else? I thank the Lord for being here tonight. I thank the Lord for being here tonight. I thank the Lord for being here tonight. I thank him for Tommy's message. And I'm thankful that we've got a peaceful home again. And I ask that y'all pray for the two little boys that did have to leave, that God will go with them wherever they go. And They'll get the help that they need. Amen. Somebody else. You know that man on the square, uh, you know, he was talking about that guy that was in the prison. And all of us felt, you know, go up there and try to talk to him. You know, what's, what, what, what makes things like this? You know, just try to talk to him. And... Which I didn't get to, but you know, if you, if you just go talk to somebody like that, they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to your opinion because they're stuck in their ways. And so, you know, I'm a powerful weapon. It's not talking to them. It's not knocking them in the head. It's not any of that. It's prayer. All we can do is pray for them. Amen. The Bible said not cast your pearl before the swine. Right. In other words, you don't go up there and cast out what you've got in, for, in front of the devil. You don't go up there and show yourself in front of them. You just go up there and let your light shine. Don't give them the time of day. Don't let them try to ruffle your feathers. You say, Brother Elders, that ain't the Bible. Read it. The Bible said don't cast your pearl before the swine. In other words, he's saying don't cast what you've got before the enemy. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. See, if you've got the goods... God knows you got the goods. All you got to do is let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see their good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Also, after New Year's Eve service, we will be going to Misty's and Daniel's house. Or Daniel's and Misty's house. <laughs> We're going to be having uh, soups, finger sandwiches, dip, vegetable dip, vegetables and dip, uh, finger food. We're going to have little weenies with barbecue sauce and smokies. But anyway, we're going to have food. 
Yeah, everybody just bring what it bring something you want to bring. You're gonna bring some chips, bring some chips and dip. Salsa, whatever you want to bring, some drinks, bring some two liters or tater. Oh, yeah, she does she done said I'm making tater soup. Bonnie's making vegetable soup. Uh, we're gonna have fellowship. I mean we're gonna have church first. Most people eat during they have service for a little bit and they break, then they go eat. Well, we're just gonna go straight to and have church and after we pray the new year out and the old year in. I mean the new the old year out and the new year in. Then we're gonna go to their house and we're just gonna eat and have fun. Hey, well we gotta have some sauerkraut and some black eyed peas now. That's a tradition. So, uh, but uh, anybody else got anything they want to say before we dismiss? Well, didn't Michael do a good job tonight, Sam? Cassie and Josh, they done a good job too, didn't they? Josh is over at Moise. In the presence of God, and I just want to. I thought you was just going to keep on going there for a minute. I thought, man, he's fixing to take off here in a minute. <laughs> okay, let's remember that. Uh, we're going to pray over our prayer box. Anybody got a need that they want to put in here before we pray over it? You want to write something down? Write somebody's name down? A lost loved one? A lost child? We'll put it in this box right here and we'll ask God to, to move upon it and to save them and to meet their needs. If not, let's stand. We're going to pray over this prayer box and then we're going to dismiss. If you want to lay your hand on the prayer box, it's fine. Blessed Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you, God, we pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, you move upon every need that's in this box, Lord God. You know each and every need. God, you know each and every one that was put in here, Lord. God, you know what the needs are. God, you know if there's lost loved ones. God, you know if there's sickness, God. Or God, if it's just some financial need, Lord God. I pray, God, that you would move upon them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, whatever it may be, God. God, right now, as we pray over it, God, you said we're two or three agree on touching any one thing. God, that it shall be done, God, if we believe and we stand upon it. God, we ask it done in Jesus' precious name. God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to dismiss. Bless the Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you once again. God, we thank you, God, for this night. God, we thank you, Lord God, for Sister Connie's message tonight, God, that there is a wedding that's going to be performed one day, God, and God, I pray, God, that we're ready to go, Lord God, that everybody is ready, God, that nobody tries to slip in any other way, God, God, we just ask, God, that you would move, God, and bless, Lord, uh, God, continue blessing the church, God, and bless each and every one that's here tonight, uh, God, I pray blessings upon them, God, I pray, God, uh, I pray, God, right now, God, that you would bless them, come and bless them again. On God. I pray, God, that you would move in their lives, God, each day that they live. God, you show them the way, God, that they need to live and the way they need to go. God, you help them, God, when they say something that they don't need to say, you speak to their heart and let them realize, God, that they said something they shouldn't have said or said something to hurt someone. God, we ask you right now, God, that you would go with them. Keep your hand upon them. Keep them safe, Lord. I pray, God, that you would move. God, be with them this holiday, Lord. God, as we celebrate Christmas, God, this year, I pray, God, that you be with each and every one of us. God, we give you praise and glory and honor for it. God, we ask it all in your son's precious name. Amen.